But one has to know that <coughs> only we are realized souls is not the point. Only that we can feel the vibrations is not the point. That we can give realizations to others is also not the point. Then what is it? Very important is the content within us. What do we have within us is the point. These are all the expressions of what we have within. Supposing somebody is generous, then know that he is a rich man, otherwise he cannot be. So the content within us, we have to see. And when we start seeing the content, where do we find in the nature there is real content? We say the sea. Sea is there, sea full of water. So much of water it sucks in from everywhere. And then it allows itself to be boiled by the sun and gives rain. But sea is the lowest level, stands at the lowest level and sucks in all the water from everywhere. In the same way, a surgery must know that to be really achieving more content, we have to be not at a higher level outside. It said in the Bible you have to be meek, but I think it was not explained to people. Only the strong people can be meek. Secured people can be meek. Only the rich, in essence, can be meek. Not the people who are insecure, because they are insecure, how can they be meek? And not the people who we think are rich, so-called, because if they are rich, they are not generous, they are not satisfied, they are not philanthropic, so they are not rich, they are still greedy beggars. So the content within us is to be seen. What is our content? You love me, I love you, it's very good. But when you love me, we have to know that there are certain qualities which are very lovable in a surgeon. Actually people get lost even after surgery. They think they can get over everything, they are perfectly all right and they are thrown overboard. So when we say that we have to be meek, this is a content, the humility is a content. Try to do that. Try to be humble with someone. You'll, you'll like yourself. You'll enjoy that quality within us, that, you see, I'm humbler than another person. And what is another thing we find has content are the great mountains because they have heights. And they are the only ones who can capture the clouds. So such a rapport there is between the humility of the ocean and the heights of the mountain. 
That's how Esa Yogi should be. He is too high because so much of content is there in that ocean, then it has become beautiful like clouds and touched his height, his kailasha, where resides the Shiva. So it's so joy-giving. Of course, as you have painted me there, it's true, that was my situation once upon a time. Today also it is my situation, no doubt, in a very subtle manner, because there's so much of negativity and I have to work it out on all kinds of levels. There is no excuse for some human being to be a devil, no excuse. And for a Sahaja Yogi there is no excuse at all. But still, once I have called you my son, my child, there is a little blessing goes, I would say, long rope. But that long rope one should not care for. You have to care for your own quality, for your own inner capacity to suck in. Now look at the ocean as it is. All that is around falls into the ocean, everything. And then the sun, we can say that's the spirit, evaporates, only possible. In the ocean it doesn't evaporate the river so much as it can because such a wide thing, such a deep thing, inexhaustible. And then absolutely pure material comes out of that. And that can go and touch the heart. Because as a search of yours, hearts are at a very high level where there is Shiva residing. Nobody can reach there except for the purity. And unless and until you have that largeness, that depth, that humility, and the mariyadas. Nature is bound by the divine. The divine looks after the nature, so everything works out beautifully and you have freedom. And after Sahaja Yoga you have greater freedom. <coughs> Absolute freedom because you can not be bowed by anything nonsensical, anything sinful, anything base, you are above that like a mountain. And so wherever there is a combination of a mountain and an ocean, the ships can come. Deep people can only come to such shores where there is depth. That's how you achieve your depth between your heart and your Bhavasagara, that beautiful area where people can come to you and just they know this is something great. Everybody knows that. So when the Sahaja Yogis have that content within themselves, the collective unconscious, the divine, will act, definitely act. Like a person who is spreading advertisements, this, that, yes, people come because it takes money. They think they can purchase this money. But where there's no money involved, no business involved, nothing, you people are just simple people, just like them, so. 
But it's all done by the divine, isn't it? So the divine works it out. But if the Sahaja Yogi is in a place are good for nothing, then even if I am there it does not work. Half-hearted people, if they are, it does not work. In no way to discourage you, but to tell you that you have to develop your content within yourself, a complete faith in yourself. This is the greatest property of a surgeon. And what is this ocean? It's love, it's love and love. It doesn't talk, it doesn't do much, nothing is to be done in this. It just works, spontaneous. The less you do, the better. The more you try to do, I will do this, manipulate, they know. You just develop your content within yourself. And imagine you are also lucky. You have so many provisions which nobody had. They had to go into jungles, they had to take all the wrath of their gurus and <clears throat> nobody to protect them. And they never had Adi Shakti to worship. So you have Adi Shakti with you, whose power is all this divine. So you are at such an advantageous position. But first you must realize, so when we say we should have content, then the vessel has to be strong. Otherwise everything will break. And this strength is the one you should know that you are completely protected. No one can harm. They'll try. This has to be, otherwise how will he test whether you are absolutely safe or not? So somebody has to try some tricks just to see and for you to watch how you are successful. Without doing anything, you'll be amazed, everything will be cleared out. And you'll not know how things have cleared out, how things have worked out. So the strength comes, again the question is how the strength comes into a surgery. There I would say the Shraddha. Shraddha is not blind faith. After Sahaja Yoga, after Realization, you know everything. You've seen my photographs, you have seen how Sahaja Yoga works, you see now you can reach the Kundalini of people, you can feel the vibrations, you can feel others, you can cure others. All this power is within you. But just to realize that power without ego is your strength. And when you are powerful, you don't have the ego because what is the need there? Ego is there only when you don't have power because you want to have more, more, more. But when you are fully there, there's no ego. So this power is to be ascertained first, to find out whether you are powerful or not, to find out first. And then, like if I have to sit on the chair, I'll see, is it all right or is shaky? Oh, it's all right, I can sit on this. Some surgery still remain on the periphery. There's sometimes a very big gap between some who have reached great heights and some who are outside. All these are negative forces which were killed long time back. Only one Shakti was sufficient to kill them. 
ऑफ काली शक्ति दुर्गा शक्ति बट यू हैव सो मेनी ऑफ दैम यू हैव महालक्ष्मी शक्ति यू गॉट सरस्वती शक्ति यू ऑल द ट्वेल्व डेटीज आर देयर वर्किंग फॉर यू so realizing it is the meaning that you must have complete faith in yourself but the mediocrity to be on the periphery not to work it out take it easy not the way for such we don't have to kill demons there's no need to join any uh war or to fight like soldiers as they fought with devi nothing you have just to take out the negative within yourself lethargy from you and work it out we say mantras we know what are the powers of the mantras are but you have to keep them awakened for that i have told you 100 times you must meditate not the way to meditate all right it's like playing golf sort it's not that way it's a serious thing you are worshiping radha shakti with that complete understanding and dedication you have to do it not a mechanical thing it's not a game it's something very subtle and special in no action we can describe it it is just a very deep feeling to that depth no other feeling goes with that feeling you have to meditate and then see the results many people say i have done this but i have done that after still because you are not deep enough it's not how much you pray it's not how many words you use for prayer but it is how deeply you have touched the feet of the divine that is important so today we have to see that devi is using her sword to pierce through our heart so that all negativity runs away and through that she wants to plant the lotus for she wants to settle down she wants to take away all that ugliness from within it's like an operation but so delicate and so beautifully done you never even felt it i would say adi shankar acharya realized it and that's why he gave up the idea of writing any treatises and let's make it simple the praise of the mother finished if you praise the mother everything will okay. but that's not i find that's not so it's easy see human beings are great experts they can be just like radios praising praising nothing goes inside the heart but you have to develop that depth in such yoga we work through our heart not through our brains you have to develop that heart and to receive into it the greatness of other people now people can see what's wrong with others very easily they don't want to see what's wrong with them any intelligent man can see that there's no need to have realization but a wise person sees what's wrong with him and he trusts he trusts himself then because he's wise he 
doesn't doubt. He knows his voice. He knows what's wrong with him or what is to be done. So the work of the goddess is very different today as you can see clearly. Of course, symbolically it is the same. But it has become very subtle, very subtle. The first work is to destroy the negativity, which is going on, as you know. The more light comes in, the ignorance will disappear, this light will spread, all the darkness will go away. But you are the lights. You have to put the lights on and you have to look after your light and you have to make that light eternal. This is one work which you are doing. This beautiful work of the Goddess you are doing is to spread light, enlighten people. The negativity that is around you is not so dangerous as whatever is in you. Today it has become subtler. The negativity has become subtler. It's entered into your being. And be careful, it may any time top on you. Even one step you do not put right when you are climbing up, you can go down. So one has to be alert without tension. You have to be alert without tension. And the alertness grows. Now this was the work of the Goddess before. Goddess used to give enlightenment and Goddess used to be alert for you. She would sit like a tigress for her children. They are praying, they are doing puja, they are doing some sort of a uh, home, havana, so the Goddess would sit out, protect them from all negativity coming, all rakshasas coming, kill them, they used to do that. But that stage is gone now. Now she's entered into you. So you have to kill your negativity, you become as powerful as your mother. No negativity can touch you. So you can give realization, you got that power very well. And you can watch your defects more than that of others. And you try to put them out because they are not good, they are not for your benevolence, they are not for your ascent. By that nobody is going to gain. At the collective level it just works automatically. You don't have to worry, it comes to culmination and a person goes out. As if somebody runs up like a blind fellow on a cliff and jumps, jumps down. You don't have to worry too much about it. It just works, you have seen, it has worked that way. Now another quality that you have, to believe that the Goddess is working through you. In you she resides. You have got the powers. It's penetrated into you. Is that you can comfort people. You can cure them. You can give them peace, you can give them bliss. But then what Goddess has done in you is that she has given you the bliss. You have become bliss. Like they say, say a cool air conditioner, you get the cool from there. In the same way, if you are emitting bliss, you give bliss to others. But there is no bliss within yourself. But what bliss you can give to others? So a Sahajogi has to be a blissful like the Goddess. You see, she has very extreme characters as you must have known that. She's extremely cruel, she can be very cruel and she can be extremely gentle. Like two ragas of yesterday. She could be extremely 
harsh, extremely harsh, beyond all human expectations. And she could be extremely mild. So this harsh part we need not have. It will just work. This part is only kept for the Divine. You just take to the other side. Let this harsh part be looked after by the Divine. After all, Divine also must do some work. If you do all the work, then what will Divine do? So the Divine will look after that part. So you have to enjoy yourself as the Goddess enjoys herself. Enjoys her place, enjoys her peace, enjoys her everything, her creation, her children, their love, everything she enjoys, in the same way you have to enjoy. You have to know about everything, you have to be absolutely knowledgeable, and nothing more is needed but just to say that, Oh Divine, please protect us at the most. Even if you don't say it's all right, you are looked after. The Divine is working round the stage, you see, don't see it, it's all there invisible. And you are on the stage, so they are looking out about to, what to focus light, where to put, what you like to put, what is to be done, what is to be changed around, everything they are arranging. You are nicely here. So you need not do all that work, you do your work of acting and saying dialogues, that's your work. Let them do their jobs, they are doing very well, they are excellently placed and they are experts. So to leave certain things into the hands of the Divine is what we call as surrender. And that much of is if done, then most of your things will work out so miraculously. You'll be amazed how, mother, how it has worked out. We never expected how things we got it done. There's a very, very big force working, the force, the energy, which is the source of all the energies which has created this great universe, which has created this Mother Earth, created this Sun, which has created you very delicately. This force is working. And that force is looking after you, so proud of you that you have come on the stage now. So as it is, we are today praying to the Goddess that Help us to fight our negativity within us. Give us your tiger so that we fight. Give us your lion so we fight. Let us fight all these horrible animals that are within us, these horrible haunting things that are within us, these horrible conditionings we have, we have to get rid of it. Still, still if you watch yourself, lots of conditionings are there. Lots of thin. You see, if you see there are covered with very thin curtains and you don't see it, but they are there. So let the tiger enter into all these dens and find out. And you enjoy that, riding over the horse, riding over the lion and riding over the tiger. Like a goddess, why not? After all, children get all the heritage of the mother, don't they? So you have all the heritage available to you, but you have to be worthy in the sense that you have to know that you are worthy, that's all. You have to just know that you are worthy and that you can do it 